This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. My, uh, my, my great Porky Pig impression. Okay, how are you? Hey, it's Alex. Yeah, hi. How are you? Are we a little dark tonight? Well, I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see. No, we look fine. We look fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. Not a lot of people watching us right now. I don't know what uh, the problem is. But uh, I'm wearing my Pravda t-shirt, uh, sweatshirt. It's a little tight, but uh, it shows off my new slim bod. So, you know, that's all that matters. But I thought I'd wear my Pravda t-shirt because it... Uh, I don't know where I got this. I didn't get it in Russia because I've never been to Russia, okay? So I have no idea, to be very honest with you. Anyway, um, does it look a little dark to you? No, I guess not. I don't care. I I give up. I've been I've been working. I've been doing. I've been cleaning this place up. I wish I could show it to you. Uh, maybe if I go over to camera B, you can see some of the work that I've done. Yeah, let me go over to camera B here, and you can see what I'm talking about. See, that's where girlfriend usually uh, sits. You see over there. See that whole amount over here that's missing. See, right there, okay? I, I managed to clean all that up. I cleaned all the stuff all over across the top there. So really, it's kind of nicer now than it was. Um, but that isn't all that I did. Uh, I, uh, I did something else. I, uh, uh, we have a closet back there. If you can see that closet. Uh, let me show you. Hold on a second. I'll go back to the closet. This, radio people, I guess you're not... Uh, you're not going to see the same thing. But here's the closet. Okay, here's the closet. Look at this. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Uh, well, you can't really see it, can you? Uh, well, there's a little bit of it. I, I stacked everything up. It's all neat and clean. It used to be a rat's nest in there. So I did that, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the TV set back there is going and we're replacing it with the old TV set that was in the guest room, which has now got a 4K TV set in it, and uh, we've done all of this. So anyway, be that as it may, um, let me see here. I, I know what I got. I know what I should probably do here to my camera to make it a little less dark. I didn't notice it was dark when I started out here, but uh, it looks, uh, no, it looks okay. Looks all right. Everything looks fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The exposure, uh, if I change it, what happens? It gets darker. Uh, if I open this up a little bit, it gets lighter. Let me see here. Oh, see, there we go. There we go. Uh, that's about right. Now, well, let me, let me just... I'll just do it that way, okay? And we'll leave it, okay? I, I don't care. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, anyway, that's my picture for tonight, and I'm sticking with it. And if it doesn't look good, well, the hell with you. Anyway, uh, so I've, I've been cleaning up the place, and I've been finding all kinds of little things, you know, that I thought I had lost and that I am not losing except my mind, perhaps. Uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of, you know what happens? When you, I start doing this. I do this, I've done this in my life usually about once every five years. I decide that it's time for me to, uh, to uh, change things and to, uh, to get some work done and to clean the place up. And, 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 you know, like I had these bags full of, Wires, which at one point I had all taken and wrapped up, right? And then all of a sudden they, they all become a rat's nest, no matter how hard you try. And, it became, and so here I am with this thing, and I had to untangle them and everything. I threw away a lot of wires and a lot of connectors that were, uh, you know, so that kind of housekeeping. And uh, uh, this office is the, is the next, it has been, 
getting, you know, it just got rattier and rattier, and now finally it's not as ratty as it was. So I'm happy, all right? I'm delighted that it's not ratty any longer. It's, it's still got problems over in a girlfriend's table over there. It's, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I, it's time, it was time to clean everything up. And then in the, uh, off in the guest room, we put in a big new desk. So now I've got a studio and there. I actually have a control board and everything, an old control board that I had, which doesn't have any meters. And I don't know how I used to work using that, but somehow I never overmodulated. But anyway, I used to use that at play TV. So I put that in there. And uh, I have, you know, camera and the whole thing. And if I have to some night, if, it, if something goes wrong here, I can always use that as the studio. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Maybe I'll get a better control board or something there in a while. So listen, I got to tell you something. Uh, I, was, uh, I was reading or hearing today that the richest man in the world now is Jeff Bezos. Did you hear this? Uh, when we talked about billionaires, we were talking about guys like uh, the Sage of Omaha, Warren Buffett, who I guess was worth somewhere around $50 billion, and, and uh, it's Microsoft's uh, Bill Gates, who supposedly, even though he's been giving away his money like crazy, been giving it away, away like it was, you know, water. Uh, he still has like about seventy billion or something like that. But all of a sudden, Jeff Bezos, this guy who runs Amazon, a company that to this day has not gone into profit. Okay, in all the years, because they keep pouring money into it every time they start seeing that they're going to profit to make it better and better and better and better. And um, he's worth supposedly one hundred and five billion dollars. Hundred, what do you do with $105 billion? Really, you do nothing except have bragging rights that I've got $105 billion. Uh, what I would do, I, let's see, what would I do? Well, I would, uh, gosh, uh, hell, what, what could you do with $105 billion? You could buy a lot of major corporations, or at least buy into them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, no, you, for 105 billion, you could probably buy a major motion picture studio and still have a lot left over to, for the rest of your life. Okay. Anyway, Bezos is worth 105 billion. Now we could all say, oh, geez, you know, what an asshole, you know, he runs that fucking Amazon. Oh, let me tell you something about fucking Amazon. I had to deal with them today in a very pleasant way. This always happens. I got, I, there was this, uh, um, um, you know, these sound bars for the TV sets. And the sound bar that I had, which is the old sound bar that's sitting over there in the corner, it was a big, huge, clunky thing. And the new TV, and it was fine as long as the TV set had a, what they call a, be, a bezel or something like that, which was, was thicker. So the distance between the bottom of the screen and the bottom of the set itself, and then you've got it on a stand, was a nice, big enough that you could put this thing in there and it was just fine. It didn't interrupt anything. But when I got the new set, they made the bezel almost invisible. I mean, it's just a little line of metal around the top of the thing, around the thing, so that that thing kept, was like interrupting the picture. It was in the middle of the picture. Unless I leaned it on its side or whatever, I, I, I couldn't get it so it wouldn't uh, uh, impede the picture. In other words, the bottom of the picture was cut off by this damn thing. So uh, I decided that I should get myself another uh, sound bar and I saw this one at uh, Amazon and it was 150 bucks or something like and uh, no it was a hundred and oh no it was 125 dollars that's what it was it was 125 right uh, and uh, 200 watts and I decided uh, yeah I'll buy that and I went and I bought it meanwhile I'm at Costco on Saturday and I see this I see the same product except a 320 watt for a hundred and fifty a hundred and sixty seven dollars and I said to myself well I really should get that because the other one was taking a long time getting to me so I get on, on my Amazon to see if I can 
stop it from being shipped? And they said, no. Well, I decided to buy this thing anyway, and I figure what I'll do when I'll get it, I'll simply send it back saying, you know, uh, I ordered it by mistake. Uh, they accept, they, you know, they accept that, you know, my dog ate the homework as, as an excuse. They don't care. They just ask you why, and you say why, and there are any number of excuses you can give, the best of which is I didn't order it or it wasn't what I wanted or I ordered it by mistake or whatever. So um, uh, I said, oh, I'll send it back when I get it, when I get it. So today I get it, uh, and I go online and say I want to return it, and then I print up the mailing label, shipping labels, and a little label you put inside so that if the label falls off, they still know where it's supposed to go, and a little thing on there that says it's got lithium ion batteries in it. I pasted that on there. Grabbed my cart, my shopping cart. This was a big, bulky box, but it fit right, just right in the cart. Wheeled it down a, a block to my U UPS uh, 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 store uh, and uh, said, here, uh, please ship this. And, and they, they told me uh, on... Uh, on Amazon that they were going to charge me $15 for returning it. Uh, they wouldn't charge me a shipping fee if it were broken or damaged, you know, or whatever, didn't do a lot of things. But because it wasn't damaged, you then pay the shipment back because you had buyer's remorse or whatever. So I simply, I didn't even unpack the box. I just had to open it up a little bit to put that one slip in. I take it down to the UPS store. They grab it. I said, can you help me get this out of here? And the guy said, who do you think I am? And they looked at me and he said, I'm only joking. Here, we'll help you. And we got the thing out of the cart. And I'm back home and everything. Got to be maybe three hours. I get a message from Amazon. Uh, we've just heard that you've, uh, you've shipped our pa the package back to us. Expect your money back in two to three days. What? I, the thing probably hasn't even been put on the truck at UPS yet. They just get a thing saying, I've taken it to UPS store, and I'm sending it back. And they're already processing my money. The thing hasn't even left the neighborhood yet, and they're processing my money. Now, that's a good company. That's a company that does the kind of business that... Uh, that everybody should be doing. They have had it right for so long, and the only thing that pisses me off, and I have yelled at them and yelled at them about this, and, and is that they take the cheap way out when it comes to shipping. Now, a big shipment like this comes UPS. Post office could not handle a box like this. But most stuff comes through the post office. And we have the worst fucking post office in the world in this neighborhood. And half the time, they'll say, well, we couldn't get the gate open or there was nobody home. And I was home all day. I had a baby monitor on uh, uh, that, that I have so that I can hear the buzzer in the, in the kitchen because, you know, this place is so, th the walls are so thick that you can't hear something it's amazing how you can hear certain things, but you can't hear other things, and you can't hear certain things from certain rooms, but you can hear from other rooms. It's so anyway. I have a baby monitor in the bedroom that when I'm expecting a package, I turn that on. Nah, the guy never rang up, you know. And they go, "Oh well, you know, we tried, we tried, and you weren't home. That was it. Too bad. Out of luck. Shit, out of luck. Fuck you." And so I I yell at them all the time, saying, "You know, the post office constantly fucks up." I mean, they even delivered the package once to the wrong apartment because uh, I, I can't remember why they had scribbled on it the, na the number of the apartment, even though it's on the label, and they got it wrong, and the guy delivered it to the wrong apartment. Get a knock on my door. It's a neighbor from three flights down. Says, is this your package? And I went, yes, and I had to thank them. And, you know, Very nice of them to do it, but you know, if they didn't do it, I would have never gotten my package. But the one good thing is you can call up uh, Amazon and say my package never got here and they'll say okay we'll send you another one and I then I on one occasion I said well yeah but but what if the other package arrives and you send me another one they said oh we'll just keep it 
This is why Amazon hasn't made money yet, folks. They're giving, they're giving the farm away, for Christ's sake. Do you realize, for $100 a year, I think it is, you get Amazon Prime. I don't know how much you, you pay because I'm on Shecky's uh, uh, Prime, although girlfriend has her own Prime, so I could go on hers. Uh, $100 a month. You can also have several members of your family part of Amazon Prime. You could order, and I, I one time I did, I ordered something, I think it was 99 cents, and they sent it. Okay? That, that's how they are. Uh, and Prime also gives you, if you have Prime, you can also watch uh, Amazon Prime, uh, the internet uh, channel with all the shows on, like Marvelous Miss Maisel and Mrs. Maisel and uh, The Tick and a whole bunch of things like that. So, I mean, they're practically giving the store away. I mean, uh, and so when we hear about Jeff Bezos being worth $105 billion, you got to say to yourself, uh, he earned it. You know, he came up with a better idea and a better way of doing things. Now, let me tell you this, and I, this was a statistic. I swear to you, I heard this on TV yesterday. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, 80% of all purchases for the Christmas season were made on Amazon. Think about that. 80% of the Christmas business in this country went through Amazon. And what's amazing to me is they, and, and, and believe it or not, I mean, most people this year shopped online. Why shouldn't you shop online? Am I doing an ad for Amazon here? Why shouldn't you shop online? You, 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 you see an item, it's cheaper than it would be in most stores, okay? You buy it. It's shipped to you within two days. If you want it gift wrapped, you'll pay a little extra money and they'll gift wrap it for you. You can do all your Christmas shopping just sitting here looking at your computer saying, well, I'll get that for Madge and I'll get that for Uncle Bob and I'll get that for our son Willie and, and uh, one thing after another. And before you know it, you've done all your Christmas shopping and then you just sit there and wait for UPS to knock on your door or for USPS, the postal service, to not deliver it at all. But, I mean, what an easier way to shop than to go down, fight the crowds at some store and pay, yes, pay more money for the item than you have to pay on Amazon. So, I mean, it really is uh, it's good. Although this thing I got at Costco, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, sound bar, I think actually was cheaper than on Amazon. But uh, uh, I found that some things are cheaper at Costco than on Amazon. But when it comes to electronics, they don't carry a lot of them. They've got like about three screens. I bought this big screen here, 32 inch screen. It's made by Dell. It looks great. Uh, and it's 32 inches. And I got it for 100 and. Six, it was $187, $177, I can't remember, somewhere around in there. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe it was 100 no, it was, I think it was 157 Anyway, it, 32 inches. Now, granted, I don't have a, a card in here that can do, you know, that big a screen. It just takes the screen as it was and everything's larger, but that's fine too because you notice I don't have my glasses on. And the monitor is a bit away from me, so that's 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 a, 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 a thing too. But anyway, that's uh, you know that's that's what's going on. So anyway, uh, in the news, uh, nothing much. Uh, Trump uh, monopolizes the conversation once again today. Uh, did anybody see him attempting to sing the national anthem? It was a football game or something, and he was there, and he was standing there. And everybody was singing the national anthem, and it's almost like he didn't know the words to it. I think it was Jimmy Kimmel who said it's the worst lip sync ever. I mean, he's like, oh, he's not. He didn't know the he didn't know the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner. The man's a fucking moron. But I digress. Let me get. I want to get some stuff here from for you. Um, Oh, I know what I was going to do. Where'd I put it? Oh, well, uh, I'll do that. I'll do that later on in the show or another day. Um, 
Oscar-nominated actress uh, denounces the Me Too movement as a witch hunt. Did you hear about this? Um, popular actress added her voice to the issue of sexual harassment in Hollywood, but Academy Award nominee Catherine Deneuve is positioning herself against the Me Too movement. Now, Catherine Deneuve is very important to my life because years ago, I went down to an audition uh, for a commercial. Uh, in those days, you get called for commercial auditions and you'd go down and you'd have a whole raft of people sitting there reading the copy that they're supposed to go in and read. And, uh, you know, as you're sitting there, somebody is standing there and, and you hear through the side of your uh, ear, side of your head, your ear, that you, hear, you hear a voice. And they say, and your name is? And he goes, Orson Welles. And then you just go, well, <clears throat> I'll see you later, guys, because I'm not getting this, right? You know, or be one of those guys with the big, beautiful voices that are in New York theater. Um, who was the, who was the, there was one, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Richard Kyle, I think was his name. And he just got everything. I mean, if he showed up for an audition, you just turned around and said, I'll, hey, let me know when you got something else, right? So uh, I go in for a Chanel number no. five ad, right? And uh, I don't know why they, 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 they were auditioning guys, right, for it. And uh, so I went in and I started reading the copy. And I remember the copy because it was particularly disgusting, Um and one of the reasons I never got any of these commercials is half the time I would start laughing so hard that they would just go, see you later, Mr. Bennett, right? Because the copy was, well, the copy on this thing read, are you ready for this? Hey, guys, you know what she wants. Give her Chanel number five. What, what are they supposed to mean by you know what she wants? Of course, that wouldn't fly today with the Me Too movement, but in those days, hey, guys, you know what she wants. And I, I go in there, I'm, you know, guys, what she wants. Chanel, number five. And, you know, next, oh, okay, we'll give it to Orson. We'll give it to Richard Kyle. Anyway, I did this audition for Chanel, number five. And what happens when you do an audition and then you don't get it, it's always fun later on, a few months later, to see who got it. Uh, and uh, you wonder, well, who got that job? Well, Richard Kyle, maybe he was there, and there were a few other people who had these theatrical voices that I don't have. I wonder who got it, and I turn on the TV set, and who, who got the Chanel Number no. 5 account? Catherine Deneuve. Yeah, Catherine, the very same Catherine Deneuve. Uh, and, and she's, but she's not saying, hey, guys, you know what she wants. She goes... People ask me what it's like to be Catherine Deneuve. And uh, it was a, she did the whole Chanel Number no. 5 deal. They apparently changed the whole idea the minute they got uh, Catherine Deneuve. But one of the most beautiful women in the world at that time, and even as an older woman, very, very attractive. Anyway, Deneuve, known for her roles in films by legendary directors such as Louis Bunuel, Francois Truffaut, and Roman Polanski, joined 99 other French women in signing a column denouncing the wave of accusations against men in Hollywood in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. The column, published by the French Daily Le Mans, uh, blasts the wave of harassment allegations as Puritanism, saying the movement is fueled by a hatred of men, Reuters notes. Uh, the UK publication, The Guardian, reports that the column claims the witch hunt that followed Weinstein's downfall threatens sexual freedom, declaring that men should be free to hit on women. This urge to send men to the slaughterhouse instead of helping women be more autonomous helps the enemies of sexual freedom. The column declares, according to Reuters, uh, Deneuve, 74, one of France's most famous movie stars, was nominated for an Oscar in 1993 for Indochine. But uh, it, it doesn't matter. She happens to be a very well-known actress. And uh, I think uh, French women probably have a different attitude about this whole thing because, you know, they, they've always had a, a take-charge attitude. Boy, this thing is sh kind of short on me. It's, I, won't, I don't have breasts anymore, but 
it's getting to look like I have tits. Well, that's fine. I, can, I always wanted to be able to get a good pair so I could lie there in bed and play with myself. Anyway, um, and then I also wanted to quickly mention that Seth MacFarlane, uh, family guy, guy who likes to sing a lot, um, uh, and also uh, that, that new show, uh, uh, the the Orville. Um, Seth MacFarlane wrote a, a post uh, in, on Twitter, and I, let me see if I can find it. I would like because I, I rather than tell you about it, I would like to just read it. And I'll bet if I put in uh, Seth MacFarlane in searching for Twitter, uh, I'll find MacFarlane. Yeah, that's Seth MacFarlane. It's not MacFarlane, it's MacFarlane. Um, let's see here. Um, let me see here. Okay, this is it. Let me, let me read it to you. I'm going to have to turn my back to you because it's on the screen back here. You know, I've, I said last night about the whole Oprah thing that to vote for her as president of the United States would be making the same mistake all over again as we did with Trump, okay? And here's what McFarlane wrote, and it is eloquent beyond eloquence. Oprah is beyond doubt a magnificent orator, but the idea of a reality show star running against a talk show host is troublingly dystopian. We don't want to create a world where dedicated public service careers become undesirable and impractical in the face of raw celebrity. Bravo. Bravo. Big bravissimo. Terrific. Seth MacFarlane, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me see here. I forgot to even turn on my phones and... I got to do that because if we don't turn on the phones and nobody calls, and if nobody calls, uh, I ain't got a show. And if, oh, today, today is Herb Jack's. Oh, today is uh, Jack Bishop's. It's <laughs> Jack Bishop's birthday. Oh well, happy birthday, Jack! I just noticed that on my uh, if 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 uh, um, um, Skype didn't tell me, I wouldn't know, right? But uh, now I do. And I, uh, uh, we're uh, so now I've got the I've got the phones going and ready to go. The phones, the Skype, they're not phones. Remember when we had phones? Remember when you dialed? No, you don't remember any of that. You know, I I you know I love uh, Jack Bishop's show. By the way, I I love Jack. He's a very talented broadcaster. But man, you got to be seventy years old to remember any of the things he talks about, for crying out loud. So I try not to reference that old, if I can't, if, if, if I can't, okay? So, I don't know. Anyway, actually, I like the picture a little dark like this. Not as blaring and looks good. Looks good. Anyway, I'm waiting for people to call now. We use Skype, and if you don't know how to call, go over to gabnet.net. And uh, check out uh, the right-hand side of the page to tell you all the things about how you can call this program. There's even a phone number if you don't want to use Skype. So, uh, and if you do have Skype, all you have to do is click on one little place on that page, and it will dial us up. So it's very, very, very simple. Uh, I don't think we're going to hear from Phil tonight because I think tonight it is his, is his photographic class. So now I'm going to sit here twiddling my fingers waiting for people to call. Oh, well, here comes Rob Alfano. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Is that you? Were you listening to me? Oh, yeah, I think that was you. Who's that? Uh, yeah, I think I heard some audio coming from your end. You oh, did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, huh. but not now. Not well, now. Let, me, let me just try that again because yeah. who's that? Uh, yeah, I think I yeah, you that was what, that's what I heard. Yeah. Wow. See, it's working again because I, for what? some reason, couldn't get stuff to play. What? I tried to play something one night and yeah. couldn't get sound, so now it's working again. And I don't know what I did that fixed it. Yeah. What was what was working? I, I can actually play sound now. Yeah. Which I couldn't do before. Wow. Couldn't play sound coming over Skype for some reason. I don't know why. 
Mm. But I guess I must have pressed something or done something that, that is making that work now. Let's so see that's here. Good. We're having a little bit of problem here with the video. Mm. What's this? All of a sudden it went that it went out on us? What is this? This is not true. This is not true. Let me see here. There we go. Well, uh, let me see. Oh, here we got to go to Phil Meyer. Oh, he's calling. Phil's calling in, huh? Phil and um, Mike. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's, the, what's the problem? Huh? My CPU usage is... That's what it is. I, sorry, I thought I mentioned it's every other week. Oh, it's every other week? Oh, okay. All right. Well, folks, if you're having a hard time watching the show, I don't know. I'm, I'm having some trouble here. Uh, later on tonight, we, we make a, we we're recording the show, so we just put it up, and it's okay. How are you all doing there? All right. Good. Good. Yeah? Let me see here. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to get things working here, uh, and they're not, so, you know. And now, Phil, my picture's a lot better, isn't it? No. Today? It looks the same. Uh, it's uh, it's out of focus. Yeah, it's fuzzy. It's very soft. Yeah, you're always fo fuzzy. It's like, oh, I give up on. I you're give up you're on worse. Him. You're worse. No. To, you're worse tonight than no. you were last night. You look no, like I'll forget it. Then. Just forget it. Uh, there may be something uh, no. out of focus, sir. I'll just leave my camera off. Yeah. 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 Did you wash the camera in the in the dishwasher at? Uh... <laughs> no. In cascade you got uh yeah yeah, yeah. let me uh, let me just change my picture size here because i'm getting in the way of jeff's lovely face and i don't want to do that oh my god okay there we go oh i just shrunk so so uh, is that the way you produce uh, uh, or they spell pravda with an r uh, uh pravda i yeah uh, no, I, I don't know if that's an that's... r that's a russian something it's, yeah. That's a Russian newspaper. Broadcast. You are so blurry, it's ridiculous. You look like you're underwater. Oh, shit. <laughs> and a camera, That's yeah. What it's kind? a Logitech. Oh. A, uh, it's a, a, a yeah, with a but, but it, 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 is there a thing where you have to focus it? Is that any better now? A little better. Now no, it's starting to. Yeah. Uh, He's got yeah. tobacco. Stuff all over. It there. is not. There's nothing on there. <laughs> yeah, it's tobacco He's smoke. It all over right. Fish Good night. Oh. It's uh, fish scales. Huh? Fish scales. Oh, he's mad at us. <laughs> he got pissed. We insulted his fucking camera and he got <laughs> mad at us. Oh, wow. Well, okay. All right. Well, at least, uh, this, you know, I mean, his sound effects will be a, will be lost. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Well, at least we have three really clean, non-foggy pictures instead of uh, what looked to be, I don't know, uh, I looked to be like he was smoking and the room was filled with smoke. Or he was underwater or something. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. Maybe uh, he's rebooting. Huh? Oh, now we're now we're doing fine on the internet. Finally, we're streaming okay. There's something so went wrong. He, he was sucking up all your bandwidth. He was sucking up all our bandwidth, yeah. 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 For some reason, my CPU usage is rather high tonight, and I have no idea why. Um, yeah. You know, but who knows? Who knows? I, I can't Maybe understand. The... Rob is uh, eating something. What are you eating? And do you ha did you bring enough for the rest of us? Orange. Want a piece? Oh, 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 good. That's, that's just on one orange that I guess he's allowed, right? Two fruits. Two fruits. Two? Yeah. Two, Two, Two fruits. Um, uh, but... It, it, uh, How's, how is the diet going, by the way? Good. I'm down 25. Good for you. Good for you. You yeah, know, I, and you know what's really weird? Uh, over Christmas, you know, of course, we cheated. Mm -hmm. And I went back to waking up feeling fuzzy and like a hangover. Yeah. I think I must have sort of allergy to a lot of foods. Because I wake up feeling refreshed and great on this diet because the, the food is simple, just simple vegetables, mostly a lot of cabbage we eat, and um, and a lot of chicken. And I wake up feeling like a million bucks. And so a couple of days that we cheated, I wake up, I feel like I drank. Yes, um, yes. I got that 
dull kind of uh, malaise. To, you know, I can't think clearly. What the hell? Did it, I ever tell you about a test called an ALCAT test? A L C A T. Uh, they test Wait a minute. For- Hold on a second. You're you're we're getting slapped back from in. I just want to make sure that uh, there. Okay. I think- uh, uh, now with this test, my nutritionist did it for me. Uh, they they take your blood and they check 200 different foods and allerg- uh, and uh, chemicals to see which ones give your blood inflammation. Now, what gives me inflammation may not give Alex inflammation, for instance. You mean like uh, an erection? No, inflammation. Oh. Uh, I meant- it, 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 you know you know when you eat like uh, MSG at a Chinese restaurant and your hand swells. Yes. Well, that, that's an indication of inflammation. But you can get the same type of thing in your gut due to certain foods. So I found out uh, they, they give you back a chart and it says these foods you can eat, these foods you should be cautious, these foods you shouldn't eat at all. And then what you do is as you just eat the ones that are in the green light, uh, ones that you can eat, you're, you're healing your gut. And then you can introduce weekly one of the uh, one of the. Uh, this is way too foods, confusing. Which, this is way too confusing. Well, uh, what it does is uh, over time, you're able to introduce foods that would normally give you inflammation and find out which ones. Yeah. You mean, but, I mean and, uh, and, and, and because you eat them in small quantities, because you know you can get away with it as opposed to, because I, th- I would assume that it's a buildup, right? If you uh, had, although I, I tell you what, going for almost a month on this diet and then cheating for the couple of days that we did, it wasn't long before I woke up feeling the way I woke up. I wake up a lot of days, which is, uh, I feel like I have a, the best way to describe it is I feel like I have a hangover and I didn't drink anything. Well, then obviously uh, you uh, are not eating something now that you used to eat that uh, they created this. So if you wanted to find out which ones do it, just Google ALCAT, A-L-C-A-T test. I got a question, Rob. Can you use in your diet like olive oil? Which is one of the better oils to use. We use coconut oil. Coconut oil? Mm-hmm. I, th- coconut I, would th- oil. I would think the coconut oil would be more, you know, more fattening. There's more fats in it. It's on the it's on the list of things we could eat. So my wife fries everything. And you know what? It adds a little sweetness to the food. And I actually love it. I love the smell of it when she's cooking it. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing is that when I get to eat normally again, the foods that we're eating, I really enjoy. So I'm going to just have more of it. It's not like I won't eat these things again because the two of us are sitting there, we're eating dinner, and I'm going, damn, you know, this is really good. So when I get to double the calories and then some, and we're going to eat the same things just in the normal, uh, you know. Well, how long have you been doing the diet? So we started on, we started on, uh, I started on Thanksgiving. So mm-hmm. there's two days of what they call loading. And then, and those two days you eat whatever you want. And then so that, that Sunday is when I started the 500 calories. So you've lost 25 pounds in, in this short amount of time. Right. Uh, which is, is fine. You know, it is fine. I mean, I went, I, with my diet, I went slower. By the way, I just want to say to people who are out there watching the video uh, it's, it, it isn't coming through, uh, very well on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook live and it's, it's freezing and it's, uh, stuttering and stuff like that. And if you have a problem, just go over and listen to us on, uh, go over to gabnet.net and you can listen to it there if you don't want to watch it. Uh, you know, it may clear up, it may not. I don't know what's causing it. Uh, I'm using up a lot of CPU power tonight, but, uh, for some reason, but on the other hand, well, it's gone down now. It, 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 I think it has something to do with Facebook, which every now and then fucks up. Uh, and if I were to restart the whole show and so on um, and the, the, the uh, stream, we'd probably be okay. But I don't. I really don't want to take that chance. Well, it could, it could be worse. You could be putting on the biggest uh, uh, show in Las Vegas right now, the biggest uh, uh, 
Yeah, this ES, the Consumer CBS, Electronics the Consumer Electronics Show, and the electricity could go out. That's yeah. what happened today. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to do something. Just keep keep Ow. talking <laughs> among yourselves. Wait, the electricity went out at CES today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? Not in the whole place, but the main, the main one, uh, my friend's mainly in the North Hall, yeah. and uh, he said they had power, but uh, yeah. uh, the uh, rest of the show was out. Yeah. I saw a video uh, on, the, on uh, the local news. I saw a video of the main floor, and it was yeah. all dark. Right. <laughs> it was just uh, none of the booths were lit up. It was, like, bizarre to look at. And, you know, consumer electronics lo show, without power, you might as well... Have door. Yeah. Well, my buddy's doing all the camera stuff, and so that's in the North Hall, and they didn't lose power. But uh, how He's long lucky. was it down? Uh, an, an hour, I think. That's long enough. And they don't like know that. why. They don't know why. Yeah. <clears throat> North Korea. Well, I mean, you don't. That's the one th place you don't want to lose power. Is yeah. at the CES show. Yeah, um, you know. Have okay. you seen some of the uh, products that uh, they're they're touting out of there? The robots and uh, yeah, I uh, have a list of them here, and I'll get them in a second. But I'm working to get us back on on video. So, uh, copy and paste. Uh, you and Mike, huh? You and Mike. Uh, let me see here. Copy. Okay, and then I go over to here. We'll we'll, we'll be ready to go in a moment here. As soon as I. Uh, as I go up to settings, uh, and we go, uh, where are we? Um, keep you guys can keep talking. Has everybody Apple upgraded software. their Apple software? Hmm? Yes, I, I did. did. Yeah. Well, there was an update that came out. What yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Now my phone, uh, I can't sync it at work, and, and uh, at my iTunes is crashing. Uh, I get through to the to the fifth thing, and and then it crashes. So Apple was supposed to call me today. They did not call me. What do you mean you sync it at work? Well, on my uh, computer at my desk at work, that's mm -hmm. where I sync my uh, my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Sync it to what though? I don't understand. Like to my desktop. Uh, you do still do that? Yeah. Wow. I don't remember the last time I synced a phone with a desktop. Well, uh, why you use the cloud? I yeah. Huh. Everything's at iCloud. Backups go to iCloud. When I when I get a new phone, I do a final backup of the phone, and I just I just uh, get the new phone, put in my uh, my Apple ID and password, and then follow the prompts to download the, the last backup, bring everything back up. Huh. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll try doing it to the cloud. Maybe uh, it, that, that won't crash. It could be that they're not using iTunes anymore to sync. I didn't realize anybody was still doing it. Now you could choose computer or cloud. And uh, so I chose the computer. <laughs> it always worked in the past. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. Hey, look who's here. Yeah, Patrick's here. Mm -hmm. Hello, Patrick. Hello. Yeah. Are you there, Patrick? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um I'm going to get one of these batteries for this phone. I'll tell you that. This battery keeps running out like crazy. I'm going through that with the 6S. Uh, what happened is uh, uh, we had to make an appointment. I sent Faye in. They, uh, they uh, said, uh, well, you got to prove that this is your phone. Said, uh, okay. So they wanted the receipt. So I, I have an old laptop. And for one reason or another, I couldn't get the uh, thing to print. So uh, I bring the laptop in and show them, look, here's the receipt that I, that I got from Apple, God knows how many years ago. So they um, then say, well, uh, now you've made an appointment to come in and get the uh, battery. We're going to order the battery for you. So then they, they'll, they'll call us when the battery comes in the order, and then she's got to drop it off for three to four hours. Uh, without an appointment. So this is what they put you through to get the battery. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to wait. You got a year to do this, so yeah. let everybody go crazy. That's I'm going to just wait. I'm not going through all that bullshit. Yeah. Cuz that, that's so un Apple. Every time I've ever gone to Apple, they don't even I've called them for my Apple. I don't have a, a what do you call the extended yeah. warranty on them? Yeah. I don't any of that. Yeah. I call them they work with you. They even call you back 
Right. I've never had a problem. So this is so on Apple of them, but they're probably being inundated. That's what the guy said. He says, we just don't have them. There's, uh, mm. The line was out the door. Yeah. Man, no. for twenty nine dollars. What? What? What for the t t for the battery? Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah, you can go weeks gloves. from now and do it. Right. And right. there won't be a line. It's like everything else. I mean, why? Why do it now? It doesn't mean to begin with. Unless your performance is going low on your phone, don't worry about it. And then when the time comes, sure, get your twenty nine dollar battery. It's not People. just the performance, Alex. It's uh, having to recharge it three times a day. Really? Plazas, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, anyway. I, by the way, I, I, I now have us back up again, and we have a good signal, but there was something going out of here that was not, uh, just not, uh, not you right. You catch Rob's Yiddish, and with a perfect accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so uh, you can, everybody, uh, coast is clear. You can go back to Facebook Live, and it's running smooth. Uh, yeah. One problem after another. If I, if I could just do one show without a technological glitch, you know. Anyway, uh, so um, no. Here's a, let me go get my. Hold on a second. Let me go get, get my. Heard it's been more my iPad because you were talking about CES, and it was one yeah. of the things I was going to bring up. Uh, because there are a lot of things that they that they have at CES. Did you hear of any of the new big innovations at all? I haven't checked that out. Uh, I don't. I don't know. There's uh, somebody showed a uh, pocket translator that looked pretty neat. No, no, but but, but come on. There's got to be something. They got to come up with a new TV set that's going to make the last TV set I just bought outmoded. <laughs> it's getting more and more difficult to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, because uh, what is it? They're going to come out with 5K. You know, give me a break. There was a TV. Yeah. I, I get this email from I something or other. Uh, Maybe I could find the, one of the emails. Yeah. But I get these emails all the time. Oh, I drop news. And uh, they were showing in there a, a, a big screen TV that you can just roll up. Mm. You know, you can just roll it up and put it away. Wow. wow. Okay. Uh, my friend, yeah, I, I heard about that. My friend uh, at CES, this is his summary. Mm -hmm. uh, he says 8K is coming. 8K? Smart Wait a minute. Who, who wants 8K? Okay. Well, to begin coming. with, 4K is what they project in movie theaters. Okay. Yeah. What, what you know, with 8K, you can mix it down, and what you end up with is better. Uh, from what I understand, because I don't do video, uh, although my new camera will do four, will do 4K or 8K video. My my new camera does it. The, um, it doesn't. There's no camera I know on the market that does 8K. Okay. Uh, uh, let me look. You don't have to prove it to me. I, all I'm saying is, is that the the stuff they use in movies is 4K. 4K. You know, I, yeah. Well, my my big deal. My uh, uh, what do you call it? My little camera here. The uh, GoPro. GoPro does 4K. My oh, my 4K. iPhone. I shot a whole video in 4K. My vacation in 4K. So so fuck your camera. You double 4K. You oh, the oh bandwidth God. you're going to need? Huh? Yeah. If you double 4K, you get to 8K, and you start streaming 8K. Yep. I don't gonna... think they uh, use the 8K. They, they mix down from it, so you get a better, uh, a better end result. <laughs> but already, you know, they've improved on the 4K. I mean, I've got the improvement on the 4K in a $550 flat screen 55 inch flat screen it's called which is called hdr yeah which is is a high dynamic resolution yeah these phones have that yeah um, so what i uh, it, it what, might what the people are also saying yeah. is that the uh the alexa and the uh the google uh thing that that's in everything well it, let me it is it, in this here which is being shown at the ces show you can now ask alexa to flush Really? Yes. Kohler's hot, latest high-end toilet connects to the Internet and responds to voice commands. Beyond flushing, you can ask Amazon Alexa, as well as Google Assistant and Apple Siri, to lift the seat or activate your favorite bidet spray configuration. Jesus. <laughs> What's next after that? Turn yeah. on your shower? Alexa, flush me. 
Yeah. Alexa, blow me. Right. Well, uh, he says smart driving cars uh, are uh, being pushed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says uh, high capacity. Well, wait a minute. Let me finish. I, ha- I, have, I'm, I have the floor right now. I don't care what your friend says. The bot <laughs> just. Uh, he has 500,000 uh, YouTube followers. Good. Good for him. I yeah. have I have easily that many. Uh, Som, oh, uh, Somnox is a robot you can cuddle with. This bot wants to cuddle. Somnox, a bed companion that simulates human breathing. When you hug the robot, the rising and falling sensation subconsciously calms you down and helps you get to sleep faster, say its makers. Somnox can also make the soothing sounds of heartbeats, lullabies, and guided meditation, which you activate from an app. Best part, it doesn't even snore, but it's 600 bucks. How long will it be before they put a working vagina in it? <laughs> well, Give it two weeks. Give it two have. weeks, Bob. Give it three weeks. <laughs> I think Japan and those, uh, those uh, robots, those human-like robots, they probably already have a... A vagina. Modius, a headband to help you lose weight. Now, we were just talking about this, so it's time to get serious about losing weight. Pack on a, a few headband. pounds during this cold snap. Modus has a built-in headset that stimulates your vestibular nerve, which runs behind the ear into your brain. You use Modius by attaching a pad to your skin, which has a wire that runs up to the headband. The electric current, Modius says, stimulates part of the brain that controls your appetite. It's meant to be an extra boost to supplement your weight loss plan. Brain zapping technology is still somewhat unproven, but several companies claim it can help in everything from concentration to pain relief. 500 bucks. Mm. Okay. So uh, another, here's, a, here's, a, uh, here, here's the uh, Foldy Mate and the Landroid robots that fold your laundry. It's good. They finally came. Here's here. You, you think things get more and more modern? What happens is the MacBooks. They've taken out the USB ports and they put in the uh, the uh, the newest uh, USB C type ports. Okay, that's, that's, port. Uh, but who has a USB C port that, in most that things? Sucks. Right. So what they're coming out with for uh, how much is this? Eighty bucks is a uh, is a USB. Ah. BC plug that you plug in and it gives you your regular USB ports. That's <laughs> stupid. Yeah. yeah. Apple's uh, famous for that shit. There's this a- allows you to use earphones on a Apple 10. Yeah. You got to plug into this and then you can plug into your uh, phone. Yeah, I know very few people that are making earphones that fit just directly into that jack. Yeah. Uh, it did it's come got- with the set that fit directly in uh, it had the uh what do they call this uh, lightning yeah but you can't listen to your ipod while it's charging then no <laughs> you, know. you I mean, gotta buy one of those tabletop wireless chargers and then you could set it on that well and not, but not listen. all the not all the apple phones work with the wireless charger oh only <laughs> your iphone x boy wasn't it worth the money Oh, absolutely. And I haven't run out yet and bought a desktop charger, but uh, I may. Oh, I'm sure you will, Phil. I have one for my uh, for my Android phone. It works really well. Just You just set it on top of the little round pad, and it uh, charges it. Well, I have a, a magic mouse. Uh, I have a, a mouse, rather, uh, that had a thing. You put, instead of the batteries, you put this thing in the bottom of it, and it puts it, you put it on a pad, and it charges, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but, uh, you know what the stupidest thing was here? Here's the stupidest Apple thing of all. Now I have a wireless keyboard here. And if you may notice on the back, there is a USB port. So when I need to recharge it, I plug in the USB port, right? Or, yeah, or it's not one. the USB. It's that whatever that thing Apple has. Uh, yeah. Same one as that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine because if you're, you can still use it cause it's plugged in there. However, they did the mouse. And where did they put the mouse? Look at it, on the bottom. So that you can't possibly use this mouse while it's charging. That is maybe the stupidest thing I've ever seen any company do. 
Why did they figure it out for the keyboard, but they couldn't put, oh, well, it wouldn't look good if we had a little, uh, a little plug right here or uh, on the bottom here or somewhere where, or off to the side where you could still use the mouse. Couldn't he uh, use like a quick charge on that or something to... It doesn't take long to charge. It, it, it takes maybe an hour or something like that. But still, it, during that hour, you, I, I get out my old magic pad or whatever and use that as a mouse while it's charging. Because I don't remember to go ahead and charge it when I'm not going to be here overnight. You know. You know what sucks is you don't know how how uh, when the when that needs a charge until it's dead. Right. And that sucks. Right. It tells you about two percent before it's out. Yeah. yeah, and I'm always worried about that because I use an iPad and that little keyboard when I go talk to customers and I take notes on my iPad. I use that little keyboard, and I just I'm always paranoid. Well, how much juice is left on this keyboard? Yeah. You ever, you ever use one of these keyboards that uh, don't? It's from Apple. It doesn't require. There we go, showing us your stuff again. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> This do, is uh, tech time. I, but do you, you, how often? How often? How often do you stand. use that iPad and the keyboard? That's the problem. Well, I, what how do you mean? often? I, it how often? A cover. No, yeah, it becomes a cover. But how often do you use the keyboard? And how often do you use that big, huge iPad for its size? Uh, well, I have a program on it. I use at work uh, for measuring and making floor plans, and I have a special uh, laser that measurer that uh, uh, connects between it so that it will tell, tell the thing how long the wall is. And how much did that cost with the keyboard? That's expensive. The keyboard's about $150. Woo! Uh, oh, my camera is full frame 4K. That, that's what it was. Well, my, so is my, so my GoPro. It's not full frame. So is my, what do you mean full frame? Of course it is. 35 millimeter size sensor? I am telling you right now, I'm telling you right now that uh, uh, four, 4K is 4K. What do you mean full frame? What does that well, mean? It's, it's uh, sensor. It's, the size of the sensor is, uh, is uh, uh, the same size as a 35 millimeter piece of film. Whereas the size of the oh, sensor. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. I, uh, I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, what we're talking about is clarity there. We're not talking about the fact that it, it that 4K isn't still 4K, and it's not <clears throat> not. It's only clearer because you've got a better uh, uh, sensor. A sensor. Uh, right. Yeah. So how much that camera cost? Thirty four hundred dollars plus yeah. all pluses. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, I've, I've, I can take just as good a picture with my iPhone. Could keep up with you, Phil. There's no way. I'm glad yeah. I don't live near you. Well, they, they keep up with him, but, but you know, I can't keep up with you. You see all his all, stuff. All of a sudden, you know, every business we know is 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 uh, running into hard times because of technology and everything else. And one day we're not going to need rugs any longer. And this guy's going to be wishing that he didn't buy all that crap. Yeah. Because believe me, I, I did that back in the uh, uh, 80s, and I wish I hadn't. I wish I had saved the money and been more frugal. Minimalist. Yes. Oh, oh I mean, what, 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 have you, what have you got there, Bree? What, what have you got there, Bree? Oh, I've got all disposables, everything. Uh, do you know, Bree, the black keyboard comes with the new Mac Pro? Is, is These are Mac Pro. Ford? I was at uh, electronics weeks ago, and there's this company called Rapu, and they, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I can't see yeah. it. Uh, they're, they're, I think they're made here in the UAE anyway. They usually were going for about $60, $70, $80, and all of a sudden they had a, they had a sale for 10 bucks. So I bought like every one of them because <laughs> I've been wanting to try them. So they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's got another one around here somewhere. That's great. Actually, actually, you know the other the other one is somehow disappeared. Uh oh. Okay, I got had You're breaking up. You're breaking up a little bit there, Bree. Ah, uh, sorry. I've had stuff stolen from this office before. It looks like. It could be. I'll have to check. I might have put it in the other filing cabinet. What do you mean stuff been stolen? Yeah, what do you mean stuff's been stolen from your office? You said that with such casualness. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's an arm. Huh? Well, Alex, you have to understand that here, uh, life is different. I mean, here in Singapore as well, but mostly menial task labor jobs are are sort of shopped out to other countries, mm -hmm. countries that are poorer or less developed than here. Yeah. So that they, you know, they are not making a lot. In fact, if they asked me, I'd give them the things, but they don't yeah. ask. They just take. Oh, so. wow. Wow. That's too bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. For me, for them, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, um, um, so, uh, so I don't know. Uh, it, I just don't see where we can go more with TV. Now, you know what they did with TV sets that bothers me? I love 3D. And I have two 3D sets in this house, one of which What's is... What's a TV? Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, I love 3D. They have stopped making 3D TV sets. You cannot buy a 3D TV set. You can get a 3D projector, yes. but you can't get a 3D TV set. You know why they stopped making them? <laughs> to piss to piss to piss me it. off. No, I yeah. actually you know what they did they did a bad job of merchandising it. They came out with two competing systems and even within one of those competing systems there were different competing glasses. They all you know the ones with the shutters, there were several different type. And the the best system was the one that used the same Polaroid glasses you get in the movie theater. So if you lose your glasses at home, you can always, when the next time you see a 3D movie, take the glasses home with you and use them. Hey, uh, Bree, don't let him into your office. He'll just take the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I pay for those 3D glasses when I go to no, movies. No, no, no. You pay to use them. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You've got it all wrong. I never leave the 3D glasses at the movie really? theater. Really? Tell you Leave them. I've Every, got. I said I tell you to leave them. I've got maybe fifty three D glass <laughs> pairs of three D glasses in this house, <laughs> just because we collect them as a hobby. Um, in fact, if you look at my bear back there, uh, let me see here. Let me let me let me put bear. huh? My, He's my, bear. my my bear. Oh, you it's can't you can't see it, but the bear uh, uh, back there. Uh, the Trumpy bear, uh, uh, and uh, you can't see him because you can't see the top of the head, is wearing a pair of IMAX 3D glasses. <clears throat> you know, you won't steal the best. Those are hard to steal because they don't bend. Yeah. You know, the frames don't bend, so I had to kind of like stick it under my, like on my hip or something so that I could get it out of the theater. But no, nah, I'm not giving them their fucking glasses back. You out of your mind? I paid for those. And why? Uh, so they can take them and go clean them and sanitize them and put them back in a package to make you think you aren't getting somebody else's. Uh, rent sometimes. They aren't getting you rent some car and you and it's time to drop it back off. You're not going to do that because you say I paid for those. That's correct. All right. That's correct. <laughs> so, Patrick, how are you doing, my friend? I am just wonderful. You know, you have a you know, you really have a rosy <clears throat> disposition. I think sometimes you can get downright snarky, ornery, ornery but you're, you, you have a positive, really positive outlook on life, you know? Oh, it, it's like 50 degrees here now. Oh, is it? Oh, zero, uh, so. I know why Patrick has a positive outlook. He never has to stand in line. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's the temperature in Dubai, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, only 60 degrees in Dubai. Yeah, well, in the mornings it's kind of chilly. Yeah, but it but it says it's going to go up to seventy seven. That's yeah. not hot. Is it humid there? No. Huh? <coughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get sixty three this Friday. <clears throat> really? Yeah. <sighs> Boy, it, it's it, I don't know. I, it's been freezing in this apartment. The the. Um, uh, the landlord doesn't keep the radiators on all the time. They turn on and off and on and off and on and off. And sometimes during the day, they don't even turn them on. And I'm sitting here freezing my ass off. It's 54 in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah, it's not unusual for Ooh, that's San chilly. Francisco. Huh? It says 39 right now in New York. Is it 39. Well, yeah. that's what it says. Yeah. Oh, I, wait a minute. I, I, can, I can look. I can actually uh, go to my uh, my thermometer on the 
computer and see that it is currently in New York, 38 degrees. Uh, oh, where do you have to put the probe? Is it an anal probe? No. For that computer thermometer? <clears throat> no, no. <laughs> Very funny. Ha, ah, yeah. it is to laugh. Um, it's about time. <laughs> yeah, well. It uh, was 78. Today. Anybody see uh, Trump trying to Mark? sing the national anthem and not knowing the words? That was awesome. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Uh, it wasn't well, a man. You said no, you, nobody could hear it because he wasn't singing. Was, yeah. yeah. He was just like. Mumming. And then he would go, and then the land of the brave and move his mouth and then would stop moving his mouth. Now, when you sing, you know, and you're the president, don't you want to let people know you know how to sing the national anthem? He did doesn't. He free. You know, when he said free, did he hold it for 30 seconds? No, but he, he <laughs> literally, you could tell, did not know the words to the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Am, am I right, Phil? Um, uh, Rob, you saw it. Absolutely. He, he, he didn't say the right words at certain times. His mouth didn't match the words. Yeah. Uh, it's time for the 25th Amendment. C can this man become a bigger idiot? Me thinks not. You know, I don't think the 25th Amendment is appropriate. I think he is what he is, and he's been what he is. So I don't By think the he's... way, yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick wasn't here last night, so I'd like his thoughts on Oprah Winfrey for president. <laughs> well, I will say this. Any Democrat that ever said anything badly about uh, Trump should look in the mirror before they cast their vote for Oprah. <laughs> I do. And that's all I have to say. Well, did you you heard the thing? I read the thing earlier that Seth MacFarlane wrote about the fact that if uh, if the next election boils down to a reality show host and a talk show host, uh, it's a dystopian society. You know, it, 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 he said it, it, he said you know she's a great orator. Leave it at that. Right. You know, uh, and um, of course she's a great orator. She's a talk show host. Right. She's a communicator. Yeah. Oh, Snopes, your uh, the uh, national anthem thing. Yeah. They're saying it's false. How can it be false? It says uh, video of President Trump apparently struggling to get the words right while singing along with the national anthem proves that he doesn't know what what they are. And under that, it says X false uh, for the rating. Well, yeah, but why do they say it's false? Uh, because what we saw was he was humming and he wasn't saying the words. And it, Maybe, he did say, but, uh, I'm looking at Snopes. Uh, I put in uh, Trump national anthem uh, singing. And uh, uh, well, this just happened yesterday or something like that. So it's couple, over the weekend. Yeah. So I yeah. big red false. Yeah. Could, yeah. But so I fuck Snopes. I they, we what I see with my own two eyes, you know, Well, you can edit that, too. Hmm? We didn't uh, could edit that. I don't know. They, they got a bunch it, of pictures. Yeah, because we have a delay. If you, you uh, uh, go online, that, Phil, find the, find the video, now. find the video, which I'm sure is easy to find, and you tell I'm me sure. if he's singing the Star Spangled Banner. And, and you, you could, it could be a delay. <clears throat> what you're getting may not be what he's hearing, you know, uh, like in a stadium. Yeah. You see people singing, it's out of sync because they're hearing it at a different in a big open area. That, yeah, but you got, that, he had people on either side of him, so at least he should have been singing along with them. And they oh, were the, singing. They were singing. Look, sorry, so. That sounds like he's singing along, you know. Oh, it and, sounds like he's singing along. You just, boy, you, you're really, you know, uh, I, somebody once gave me a piece of advice in life, and that's, it was that you can do a lot of things in life, but one of the things you can't do is shine shit. And with Trump, you're constantly trying to shine shit. But you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I don't like all these attacks, and, and this book, is, there's a lot of slappy, sloppy facts in it, and it bothers me because there's enough real shit that we don't need to like <laughs> have fake shit about them. That's it, you know, it bothers me that there is this stuff out there, and the book wasn't as tidy as it could be. I hear there's a lot of uh, what's his name on CNN pointed uh, out a whole bunch oh, of facts. Yeah. yeah, he pointed out a whole bunch of facts that were you know sloppily done. Yeah, although this writer is considered a pretty decent journalist, you know, he's got a good reputation. 
I don't know if he has it anymore, but he has a good reputation. Who was that woman that used to do the tell-all jokes about uh, about uh, JFK and a, a number of other people? Uh, uh, not j- jokes, but uh, books. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, she did uh, Sinatra book. Uh, yeah, uh, she, she did. Was known as she, a, she was always a, a muckraker. Yeah. yeah. Well, this Trump is saying uh, that tr- that's what this guy is. Well, uh, uh, maybe it, he is, and maybe he or, isn't. Uh, he he claims. I mean, I've, I've read a little bit of it. He claims uh, he is Michael Moore. Yeah. yeah well, he claims he claims uh, basically that uh, he's not, it wasn't that he was reporting what he felt. He was reporting what he saw other people saying and doing. Yes, Patrick. Sorry, pa- yes, hey, Patrick. Patrick. Patrick, can you hear me, Patrick? Maybe he's frozen. He's frozen. Are you frozen, he Patrick? Frozen. Oh, he's not moving. Yeah. Oh, th- there he's he not is. There so. he is, Patrick, can you hear us? Yeah, everything kind of out of sync. Yeah, huh. well, uh, you, you, you just... Sync? Uh, 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 so just like Trump. Well, wait a uh, anyway, you had your he, he had your you had your hand up. Yeah. Um. It, look, with that, with that, um, I I saw him interviewed somebody on one of the morning shows or some shit, and she had asked him, "Had you met with the cabinet? No. Have you met with the vice president? No." And that was on his claim that 100% of the people around him said he was not fit for office or whatever. <clears throat> and this is one of her one of his sycophants. I mean, she she hates Trump, and she's asking him questions that uh, normal people would ask. Well, yeah. who did you talk to? Yeah. And the other thing is, he had said on one of the interviews as well that. Um, it doesn't all necessarily through um, true, but if you interpret it as true, then it is true. Wait a minute, you know, it's like, well, what kind of fucking fiction are you writing? And the other thing that I'll bring up again is that when does Steve Bannon have any credibility for you guys? Well, I, oh yeah, I, I I would agree with you because you're gonna you're gonna say, and you're absolutely right. Why is it we all hated Steve Bannon until he said something against the president, and then all of a sudden we're quoting Steve Bannon? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it is somewhat hypocritical. I will agree with you. Uh, I mean, if he's an asshole, he's an asshole, no matter what he's saying about Trump. Uh, but you won't agree with me. <laughs> so. Oh, never, Phil. I know. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even agree with you about what time it is, for crying out loud. <laughs> I'll argue that. Um but uh, you, you uh, um, Bree, you held up a sign there that said "Book Selling 101, right? That's right. That's all. That's this guy me. knows. Yeah. This guy knows the media. He knows Trump. And I told you yesterday, it's custom made. It's like um, just perfect, you know. But he's just selling a book. He, no, I, you know, been, he's not selling a book. You know who's selling that book? Trump. He, well, he's yeah. selling. If you know, I mean, if Obama had the same book written about him, and I think there were several of them, he didn't tweet about it or talk about it. And if somebody asked him about it, he'd go, "Well, I haven't had a chance to read it, but you know, let let people have at it, you know," and just wouldn't make comment on it. Trump sells the fucking book. No, Obama would just have the IRS go down and audit the guy for the last forty-two years, you know. That's what. Trump, yeah, that's yeah, what Obama, yeah, yeah. Obama did a lot of that. Can you name one time he did that to anybody? Yeah, well, he spied on Trump. No, no. Trump said he spied on him, and they. Which they well, no, that means it didn't happen. Yeah, uh, Patrick. And, and the thing is, with that particular part, if if Trump could only have kept his mouth shut, just the aesthetic of the cover of the book. Just stream gossip and not a real book. It would have made, it still would have done a lot of money. But if he would have just ignored it, most people would have just passed by it looking at it going, well, that looked kind of interesting, paid through it and put it back down. And you're right, he's selling it. And, and the author even said, where do I send a box of chocolate? You know, yeah. uh, 
prompts to run doing all the selling in it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, are you there? Uh, by the way, are you there, Mike? Mike? I think he's sleeping. I think Mike is sleeping. No, I'm not. Oh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, just not, not listening. Did we wake you up? Sounds like no. Like breathing. <laughs> now, why isn't your camera on? Because we make fun of it. Because it's uh, fuzzy. Well, it's... Because he's underwater. Shut up. Uh, I'm right... w what? His camera is on. No, his camera isn't on. Yeah, look at Mike. What, it's still? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what you ask? What'd you say, Mike? What? What'd he say? Uh, something about an asshole. It, it, Phil's an asshole, that's all. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Phil's an asshole. Why is he an asshole, Mike? So is Pablo Picasso. See, I mean, I think a lot of things of Phil, but I don't think he's an asshole because I know him personally, and he's a rather nice guy. He just is misguided in his opinions. He, this is a situational uh, uh, term, you know, that he's using. Yeah. For the it, day. It's a it's a uh, form of endearment. Yeah. So why do you call him an asshole, Mike? Mike. Uh, his, I think his uh, mic is off. Really? Yeah, Mike's on mic. Mike's mic is off. Is he still online? Let me see here. Yeah, he's still online. So yeah. I, I don't know what his story is. Um, let me see here. What where? Uh, what else uh, was there? Well, uh, you know. Uh, well, yes, Jeff. 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 Add to the Jeff. So what I heard today. Yeah. Which is the is the new Trump story of the day. Yeah. Is that he is finding out that people can say things against him and they could tell him stories which are not lies, which he knows they're they're lies, and 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 he can't stop them to do that. He's pissed off about that. So he said, I'm gonna change the laws. The libel laws. He wants to get rid of the That's libel. Right. He wants to get he wants to, I think, enhance the libel laws and being able to sue for libel like crazy. See, a people He's person, said that before. Well, a person like the President of the United States cannot sue for libel. There's a reason for that. He is so powerful that uh, he can't he could become the subject of any number of things and he can't sue for libel. On the other hand, you can't sue him for libel either. In other words, if he says something about you like you're a baby raper or something like that, you, you can't sue the president of the United States. But he's, he's filing suits against people. Well, who did you just file a suit against today that I saw to keep them from doing something? Him or Trump Enterprises it, it, or whatever. It, it might have been, been Trump Enterprises or it might have been his lawyers doing something to stop people. So therefore, the corporation might be able to sue. Yes, it should be able to sue. It's a, cor it's a corporation. Yes, but he has not divested himself of that corporation or has not at least put it in a blind trust. So uh, can he? You know, that's uh, through the corporation. Didn't you know that would be that would be an interesting law. It could because of he because he is the president and certain things can and can't be done. He should he should not be able to then sue because you don't you know what I mean? Is that where is it coming from? Is it Trump or is it the company? Uh, even if Trump is the company, uh, Trump the company is supposed to have its own identity. Uh, you know. According to this uh, thing that all the Democrats hate, which is, uh, uh, you know, where uh, companies are are people. Yeah, we just lost Patrick. I don't know what happened to Patrick, but I'm sure uh, he'll be back. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, here he comes again. Yeah. Let me add him to the group. There so, you know, does, does uh, if the guy who is the head of GE, for instance, uh, 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 becomes the president, Mm -hmm. Does that mean GE can't sue, even if he's a major stockholder in GE? What you do when you become president, well, everybody who has ever become president has put all his holdings, all his money, all his companies, whatever, into uh, a, a blind trust. It's very easy. Most people other than Jack Kennedy who became president didn't have a pot to piss in. 
you know, uh, you, you had Ronald Reagan had to put it, put it in a blind trust. Right. I mean, they were, had to borrow money from the Japanese the, when he got the, out because he was the, broke. The Bushes had money. You know, the Bushes yeah, the had Bushes money, had. and they put it in a blind trust. But family money. I think the Clintons even put, well, they didn't have that much money. But no, they, they stole whatever they did first, and then they put it in a blind trust. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Your your uh, example about the CEO of, of GE, it's a different thing, because the CEO of GE is an employee. He doesn't own the company. Yes, but so is Donald Trump. He's no, no, no. Donald Trump owns his company. He owns his so company. Not, it's not, it's not it, a sole it, proprietorship. It, 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 he's wait a, a No, wait a minute. He's, he's maybe a corporation, but he's not traded. It doesn't matter. Private yeah. company. He owns, uh, he, he, I'm sure he owns the majority. He owns more than 50% of it. Yeah, he's, he's the owner of that company where the CEO of GE is just an employee like anybody else, just right. a highly paid one. And he's very happy to get a stock option every year. I own 100% of my company, but I am an employee of that company. Right, absolutely. No, but you're an employee because it's, that's, that, that's for tax, tax. reasons. Yeah. Okay. I was the I was the employee of uh, Bencom Inc. when I was in San Francisco, and Bencom Inc. paid me a salary. The yeah. radio station paid uh, Bencom Inc. a licensing fee for my talents, which they controlled. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so when you did so that, therefore uh, there it created a left pocket and a right pocket. Yeah. And I bought all my personal stuff out of the right pocket, stuff that was uh, tax deductible and that was for the business out of the left pocket. See, whenever it comes time to do something for yourself, you go to the right. No, I wasn't, wasn't a right winger at all. I was very much a left winger. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have more money right now. I spent it all on buying people dinners and partying and having a good time. Yeah. Including you. No, uh, hey, uh, I, I used to pay my own way. A lot of times I took you. You know, the, yeah. the other thing is I told you early on to buy a piece of property, and you said, no, 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 I, I don't buy property. No, you know, well, there, there's a reason why I told you I didn't buy property, is that I work in the radio business, and you I, never I, I know understand. how long you're going to be somewhere, and when you asked me to do that, I had only been there a couple of years. I didn't realize I that my you, stay I there— suggest- the, my stay there would last 17 years. If I had known that, I would have bought a, some property in the very beginning. But, you know, you, in radio, there are only so many X number of jobs in every market. So it's it's almost a migrant job in a way. You go, right, Rob? You go from market to market. And so you, you're an itinerant radio personality. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's um, when you make a certain amount of money, though, probably make sense to buy property regardless oh i'm feeling the hurt right now because i'm renting and i don't have that uh, write-off now for the for the uh uh interest yeah uh i'm having to pay a lot more than i used to yeah sure. uh, and you may pay more than you used to the next time because of the tax structure now i'm hoping to be unemployed uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you, know, you never have been able to sell your rug company, have you? Uh, the two guys, I actually I had three guys so far, and all of them bailed. And it, and it wasn't uh, for financial <clears throat> reasons. It was just their personal things that, uh, that that came up, and they weren't able to do it. I'm going to list it with a broker by, this week. By the way, list. Bree is walking down the halls of his employment uh, and carrying us along with him. So. Do you think uh, it's just the kind of business it's very hard to move at this? At this Extremely point? hard. Yeah. Extremely hard. Uh, yes, Jeff. Jeff. I, I, I would uh, recommend that you uh, you get the best broker you can get. Yeah. And uh, and somebody who can uh, bring in fifty different companies or groups or people yeah. who are interested and. Yeah, I, Try I got to find the best one. I mean, who just sold off uh, three uh, super large commercial laundries? They, he's got one in Reno. They do all the laundry for the hospitals and for the casinos and and millions and millions of pounds of laundry. And so he sold uh, three of them, and he owned buildings and and so forth. And I'm going to use his broker. Uh, you know. Yeah, maybe he'll take pity on me. Because <laughs> he makes so much money off of my friend. 
I had very good success yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, by the way, you know, you're speaking about business. Uh, I was watching Christiane Amanpour on PBS today, and she had as a guest. I guess she's doing a show now because there's Charlie Rose and the other guy both got fired because of their. I correspond with Christiane Amanpour. Do you really? I have for 20 years. Really? And does she write back? Yep. I have the letters. Uh... Somewhere around here. Yeah. Well, they right. they, we, either that or they got <laughs> stolen. Uh, the the um, that's, that's what we call a callback in comedy, folks. Uh, uh, but she had on Barry Diller. Uh, and Barry Diller is a guy I've never been that crazy about. But as you know, he was the head of Fox Television at one time. And he's been with a lot of different, started up a lot of different companies. And he's he's... He's a, a fairly good businessman. And they got to talking about today's economy and, and the, the media business and so on. And the subject, of course, came up about Rob, Rupert Murdoch selling off Fox Films and a few other entities. And she, she said, why? And he said, the reason you want to get rid of them is because it's old media. He said... Rupert Murdoch is ahead of the game. Even at his age, he's smarter than the rest of the pack. And he knows that while these things are worth a lot of money right now, a year from now, he'd never get that price because the whole media landscape is changing. And so he wants to cash out of, the, of those elements he feels will no longer be worth something a year, two years down the line. So let Disney buy it take it off his hands, make a lot of money, and they can deal with the headache of how are they going to make money off this shit. You know, it's a very, very interesting way of putting it. I thought he was going to wind up with a big portion of Disney. Who? Uh, Rupert Mur Murdoch. Uh, he probably will because in they're not, I think they're doing it as a stock trade. Interest I, I, he may have a controlling interest. Uh, who knows? Uh, I don't know what the actual metrics of the deal are but certainly i'm sure disney isn't paying what is it how many billions of dollars is it it's several hundred billion dollars i think I'll just uh, write a check no that they'll they'll do it in stock rather than yeah. cash i think there's some cash involved but the stock as well and so if that's the case rupert murdoch well who owns um the largest part of um of um of of disney right now um, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, probably Steve Jobs' wife. That's you're absolutely and, correct. Uh, and uh, because what got? because Steve Jobs and his wife at least got a big chunk of the cash because I think they Disney bought them up after Jobs died. Maybe it was a little bit before he died, and uh, uh, that was a ca that was a stock transaction and a huge. Uh, she has the largest block of voting stock in Disney. Let me put it that way. So. Wow. Wow. All these guys started out of his garage. He's doing all right. Yeah, well, you know, but that's the way most of them started out. I mean, you got to realize uh, Facebook. Well, start out of a college dorm, for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know, uh, all the modern tech companies, all the modern, the big modern names, uh, he was saying that if you talk about the biggest companies of the business, there are three of them. There's AT&T, there's Comcast, he said, and Disney. That's it. That's all That's she so wrote. You know, everybody That's else is a piker. Now, that was in the media area, okay? Oh. Uh, when you're talking about big business, who's big business today? We talked earlier about uh, Jeff Bezos being worth... A hundred and five billion dollars, richest man in the Does world. Him number one, huh? Does one hundred and five make him number one? Yes, absolutely, by a long stretch. So if he just put it into CDs in ten years, he'd have a trillion dollars. Well, if he could, could get ten percent on his. If he put money in CDs, can you listen to that much music? No, no, not that. Oh, kind of oh I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, but you know what? What is the rule? If uh, is it seven or ten percent interest? will double every 10 years. I, I, I don't know. I've never been in business. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, well, I've never had a savings account. I just got my silly little Vanguard uh, account, and, you know, and it's done pretty well. I mean, I have to I take my hat off to Trump. You know, it's done well this year so far. It didn't go up almost 20, almost 25 percent uh, this year. All I know is I. It, I've gotten a return on my money of about over the years of about 25 percent back. Uh -huh. You know, it, it keeps going up. Every time I look at it, it goes higher and higher. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna that, that's gonna burst. And I'm not talking about it because of Trump, but it's just it's gonna burst. Well, it, it's either gonna burst or it's going to level out, and you're not going to see the growth. I mean, what happened was my business manager Gary wrote me one day, and he said, "I know you've been probably looking at Vanguard lately and seeing how well you've been doing because I think this last year I went up something like seven, eight grand, maybe ten grand." And I didn't have a lot of money in there invested in the first place. And he said, this is not going to last. And so when I saw him uh, the last time he was in town, I said, so what wasn't going to last? And he said, well, I was wrong. He said, apparently it is. Loss. What? Can you stop loss on something like that if uh, the market uh, begins to dump? Uh, can, uh, can they uh, convert that to... Well, uh, no, what happens is Vanguard just manages a whole fund, and then you're part of that yeah. fund. And and they've done very well. Their performance is very, very good. You remember in 2008, things took uh, a 30% dump? Uh, I took a 30% dump just before I came on the air, and, man, it was hard <laughs> to flush it down. Bada boom. Bada boom. Um you know, of course it's going to be a dump. The question is how much the dump is going to be. And and what am I going to be left with? And if I'm left with, uh, if, if I lose 10, 15, 20%, I'm still well ahead of the game. But you don't have to. You know, if, if you put a 10%, uh, you know, stop loss uh, and they and they convert it into. I don't, think, I don't think you can do a stop loss on Vanguard. I don't think you could do that in a 401k or or IRAs and stuff like yeah. that. That huh? sucks. Yes, but you're not you're not invested in you're invested in stock, but you're not buying and actively selling stock. You're sure. I, yeah, but they can't get you out of those stocks. I don't know. I, I my ex was the one that had all of that shit. I do it. Yeah, well, I, I I have a uh, 401k at Sirius XM where they gave me a bunch of non vested you know, a fully vested stock, so I didn't have to pay for it. And uh, every year, because I'm retired out of it, I have to sell off, I think, 10% of it. Mm -hmm. they, they buy 10% of it. Uh, so I got a check for about, I don't know, this year, I think it was a check for, well, let's see here. I, have to think about, I don't know, it was something like a couple of thousand dollars, right? And, give and, me, and, give and it. somehow it just, it, it, you know, their stock, though, it just, kind of wallows around it kind of is like a flounder in the sun you know who's been beached uh mm. and it doesn't seem to go anywhere how about gopro uh they, they laying off 20 percent of their uh, workforce and their stock uh, took a, a pretty big hit either yesterday or today huh. well mm. gopro and they've eliminated their uh copters the, well they should because they weren't working yeah. You know, they were crashing, and when they crashed, they also took the goddamn camera with them. <laughs> you know. Well, nice. And, and obsolescence. Yeah. And, and they, they hit somebody at the same time. Well, you know, I think they made a good little camera, and they should have stuck with that, and they improved on the camera. I think the current version of the camera is superb, just superb. Uh, these cameras are used in television production like crazy, especially when you see things like, I don't know, What's his name doing his carpool karaoke and things like that? They just mount camera. You know, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, comics and cars getting coffee. The, mm -hmm. If you look, you can see the cameras. There's one here. There's one there. There's one in front. Yeah. And one of them, yeah. and uh, they they these are all GoPros that they turn on, sync, and then they drive in the car and talk, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a very useful item. And very inexpensive. And you put one of those on a on a uh, a uh, what do you call it a uh, uh, a drone that works, okay? Uh, because you can mount them in any number of drones that do work, uh, like yeah. the Phantom works. Uh, and and all the time now on the news, they've got it in their kit with their cameras. They just 
send up drones. You know, there's a fire somewhere. They send up the drone and they show you the shot from the drone. Uh, so, I mean, uh, GoPro has a great life to it, but I think they fucked themselves over by building that fucking drone because that cost a lot of development money. I, th I think what happens is you, in order to, to be successful in business today, mm -hmm. you've got to constantly grow. Right. So you got this company and you're always looking for ways to to double, you know, 20 percent growth or whatever it is. Uh, and, and, and you take a lot of chances that way. And I, it, it got them in a bad way. You can't just be satisfied with having a company with a good product. Yeah. You need to do something else today. Yeah. Looks like we're frozen again in uh, in uh, go in uh, on, 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 uh, what do you call it? Live. Uh, they. Uh, yeah. Facebook? Yeah, yeah, it's Facebook Live. I I give up on it. Uh, you know, tonight at least. Um, GoPro is charging uh, is is now uh, selling for six dollars and five cents. I wasn't it a year and a half ago that there were seventy. Uh, I don't really know. To tell you the truth, um, but I can't figure out why I'm suddenly we're not getting any video going out right. It's uh, uh, maybe the machine here. I should have rebooted before I went on the air. <laughs> you know but anyway uh, if you people are listening to us you can watch the video after the show is over okay because we'll we are recording it and uh it will uh continue to you know to keep going um uh, i'm i'm just going to turn it off to tell you the truth since we only got a couple of minutes left anyway so stop streaming anyway um what else is in the news? Anything else that we need to talk about of any uh, great import? Uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, what what is uh, what's important and what isn't important. Um, nah, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, let me see here. Gotten a little bit of the news burnout. Yeah, there is a certain news burnout. It's, you know. Hey, you know. Bezo, it says now he's worth a hundred and six billion. Bezos, another billion today, huh? How much is he worth today? One hundred and six. Really, one hundred and six. Wow. I'm a news junkie, so there isn't enough news out there. I have every app that I conceivably know of, every website, and I. Who? What was that? that? So I, I'm. Voracious. I could uh, do very well on the uh, news quiz on uh, the NPR show. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but how much did say Bezos was worth today? One hundred and six billion dollars. One hundred and six billion. Oh, that's that's very nice. Yesterday right it was worth one hundred and five. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. A man, good week. Oh man! Oh, and my my camera just froze up here too. Oh, that's wonderful. All all of this is going bad tonight. Well, you, you're not frozen on the Skype. Yeah, I know that that I'm not frozen on. Uh, let me see here. Let me let me re uh, yeah. just keep it's talking, funny, folks. Uh, you know, there's been a backlash uh, on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, a lot of people are now saying that what you should do is you should put your phones down when you go to dinner. Uh, not take them in, uh, that people are checking Facebook so often that uh, it, it's it's becoming a, uh, a habit that's really counterproductive. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I'm yeah. doing a study right now on uh, mobile phone addiction and happiness. Really? Uh, I, I yeah. saw I, I, Apple's involved in that, too. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. they're, they're uh, doing their own, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing my own, too, and, and uh, for the Middle East. Really? Uh, so are people in the Middle East as, uh, well, maybe you don't, write, because you only come to the States maybe once a year, uh, are people in the Middle East uh, just as addicted to uh, their uh, smartphones as they are in the States? Absolutely, they are. Uh, at least, you know, in the metro areas, for sure. Um, and, you know, and in the rural areas, they definitely are, are, are getting close to that. Uh, a lot of it, you know, is co being connected to the Internet. Yeah, I, um, so, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I find that uh, lately, maybe in the last couple of months, I've been checking Facebook far too often. Uh, 
you know, it, it, it's almost like uh, rub my nose, check Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Patrick? Hey, um, if I'm not at home, and like last week, I had two dinner dates that I went on. And um, and even when I'm out with other people, I have a habit of just keeping my phone clipped to my wheelchair. I don't even put it on the table uh, for, the, for the reason that I don't even want the temptation. And I've done that well over a year, year and a half, because I've found myself doing much like Phil said, is if it was on the table, it would dare to look at, right. just like it is here at home. Right. So out of sight, out of mind, and I turned the ringer off because I, I don't want to be interrupted when I'm at dinner. So I have this uh, device called a Yodaphone, and it has an e-ink display on this on the other side. What's and it? so this is a passive screen. Yeah, you're breaking yeah, up I a little bit on this. Yeah, what, it, what, what it, what it, you're breaking up a little bit on this. But it's a very interesting phone. What he says is he, on the opposite side of the screen, it's a passive screen, so he can look at stuff but not touch it. No, you, well, you can. You can touch it. Oh, but, oh it, uh, it, but then why is yeah, it on? Why is it on both sides though? Is what I don't understand. What's the thinking on that? Uh, you know, so. Reading the New York Times yeah. uh, to uh, not eyes, uh, so no. I just read the e-ink. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And it's also, a, you get your news on one side of the phone, and then the other apps are on the other side. Is that how that works? It's exactly the same phone on both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in a meeting, I can. It's really good because I can put this down in front of me, and if I get any messages or anything. It will tell me, hey, you got it. You know, you can look at it when you want, and it can even show me, and I don't have to touch it. Oh. So it's it's good because I'm not fidgeting, and I'm able to monitor everything without taking my attention off the other. And what's that called? Uh, what phone? It's a Yoda phone. Like Yoda in Yoda? With a T. Oh, Yoda. Oh, okay. It's, it's the Greek word for I. Oh. Uh, the Greek word for the letter, the Greek for the letter well, I. Well, it's also uh, a, uh, 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 stands for uh, uh, Lucas, and I am <laughs> one letter away from suing, I think. <laughs> you know, I, I don't... I, your heart. I, I don't think they called it the Yota because they felt that they wanted to have an I in Greek. I think they wanted because it sounded a lot like oh, Yoda, yeah. and that would be commercial. Well, well they're Russians. Uh, you know, you've got iPhone... Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, you know, they're going after the iGreek phone. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No, it, yeah that's the ticket. <laughs> it was. Uh, oh, I'd buy one. If it was an Apple product and it was a Yoda phone, I'd, I'd get one. Uh, yeah, of course. You would want a Yoda phone because you're, you're a Star Wars freak, right? Exactly. Yeah. By the way, did you see the latest movie yet? No, but I know all about it, and I have no desire to see it until it's out on DVD. Yeah. Or, or whatever. And, yeah. yeah. I would love to have your take on it since you're such a, you know, a Yoda freak. I could tell you about it and give you my take without having seen it. I mean, I've read all of the spoilers, and I, I've gotten a lowdown from all my friends. Yeah. They know that spoilers don't bother me, but... Right. I don't know who hasn't seen it or who has, so, you know, but right. yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'd be fine giving her an opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so give me an opinion. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, forget it. If people haven't seen the movie yet, fuck them. I'm not <laughs> going to see it. Well, um, I think the... The movie obviously was not made for yeah. those who have been in the Star Wars realm mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, it was made for a new generation. Um, one of the things that happened, and a couple of my friends have kids and took their kids with them to see it, is the death of Luke Skywalker meant absolutely nothing to them. It was just another character. Uh, whereas the 
movie, they're all about the Skywalker family. And the death of Luke really is the death of that entire franchise for a lot of us who grew up with it. And um, new character being introduced is always a good thing. Um, Ray having no significant parents or any lineage sounds like a cop-out, like nobody thought anything through. Um, the one thing that had bothered me from the last movie and now this one is no Lando. And Lando was a very uh, integral part of the Empire Strikes Back. That's Lando Calrissian, yeah. yeah. The only, yeah. The, only, the, only bl the only black guy in the universe. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but Boyega in, in his role as Finn, of course, um, and I... I think it's great that you have Finn and Ray as the new Luke and Leia, so to speak, as male and female lead. But um, with uh, Phasma Silver, uh, Stormtrooper, yeah. she seemed like a waste of time. Well, she was a waste of time. Uh, the only thing, uh, I'll, let me just interrupt you here. I think the biggest problem with anybody else see the film at all here? No. Okay. Uh, so Huckleberry Finn is now in Star Wars. No. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, uh, what? What the the problem that I have with the Last Jedi, and with the, this uh, current incarnation of Star Wars is, is that it is purely product, you know, and it doesn't have the magic or the mythos that the original Star Wars had, even the last three, which were not great films, but they still maintain the mythos. Um, and uh, I just find there was no mythology here. Uh, even her character doesn't really matter. Well, and, and Snoke, much like it was, everybody anticipated it to be like the Emperor, he, he died like a bitch. They, I mean... Sliced them in half, and now it's it. There's no backstory, nothing. And you're right. And I personally think, and many fans may disagree, because the prequel were not the greatest movie, but I think because Lucas himself has not been involved, that there's something missing. And you're right. It's the mythos. It, 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 and I think that yeah. was part of Lucas. Yes. You know, the one thing yeah. that I did notice that I, I I went back and I looked at one of the older Star Wars films. I, I think it was, well, it was the last one, uh, in which, uh, in in number uh, number six, which is the third of the, of the films that were released, Yoda dies. And what he yeah. does is he just simply disappears and his cloak, his clothing, just kind of falls to the top of the bed or wherever he was. And that's exactly the way in which Luke Skywalker dies in this film. Obi-Wan died the same way in the first Star Wars. Yes, you're right. You're but, right. But the, the thing is, with, with the death of Luke and the supposed destruction of all of the archives, which uh, Rey apparently saved and, and took with her, um, it, it, it was... It was a very quick death of Luke, and he should have lived into the next film. I yeah. mean, you killed the Skywalker, and now you. What what did you what did you say, uh, uh, Bree? Oh, he's still. What did you, did you say? He's still he's alive. You're breaking up on us, Bree. What? Say, Sorry. I mean, uh, just audio. Uh, we're we're he's having still, a hard time hearing you. Use your whiteboard. Use your whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I know this is probably boring the rest of the people here because Phil doesn't care and Rob doesn't care and Jeff doesn't care and I don't even know if Mike's there. I have no idea where Mike is.